All right, we're at the top of the canyon. We're about to drop in. It's more convenient to take the helmet off for the... Got my climbing harness on, cow's tail, auto locking on the long one, screw gate on the small one, figure eight on a bite with a quick link handful of carabiners, eight that I plan to rappel on, prusik loop. So here's the anchor up here, clip in, inspect the anchor. I think this looks pretty good. I'm pretty far. It might be called a basket hitch. I can see a little bit more. We're gonna demonstrate the figure eight on a bite twin static system that we're never gonna actually use. So I'd get some amount of here, throw it over, figure eight on a bite, dress it. There we go. This is a twin static figure eight on a bite. You could rappel on either strand here, but then we couldn't retrieve it. Undo this and do a decent knot. If we were about to go into a pool of water or something, we would absolutely not want any knot on here. Uh, but because this is a dry canyon and it's more dangerous to fall off the rope than it is to be um, stuck in water, because yeah. there is no water, we're gonna tie knots. I'm gonna tie the knot block, which is just gonna be a figure eight on a bite. Now I'm gonna pull it up. The purpose of the uh, backup was to prevent you pulling on the wrong strand. So right now, if I pulled on the wrong strand and just went for it, I would fall off if my personal anchor wasn't attached, right? And clip this in, screw it closed. Now, if you pulled on the wrong strand, it would catch you. I think that's good to go. All right, so we're gonna have you clip in. There you go. All right, I'm just gonna put this above your anchor. Uh, you'll see that it's just more ergonomic this way. Okay. Pull all the slack out of here, fully weight it. You're on the right strand, it's holding you good. Without taking off your brake hand, go ahead and take your anchor off and you're free to repel. Yeah, if you look at your belay loop, do you see it going to the right a little bit? If you if that's straight out, you're doing good. See how the rope is just now touching the rock? This would be like the last chance to adjust it before it starts rubbing. All right, I'm removing the backup. Sweet. Put this over here. So I'm gonna pretend that I I'm making a mistake right now. I'm on the wrong one and I step back and my anchor catches me because I just took off the backup. So the backup didn't catch me, but my anchor caught me, right? So that's why we're using the anchor. Put this on correctly. Don't have my gloves on. <laughs> Did we both forget our gloves? I'm fully waiting it. Feels good. I'm gonna go ahead and take off my anchor. Now I'm going. All right, so I suppose while I'm still way far away from it rubbing on the rock, like right now it's rubbing absolutely nothing. Um, so I can take a convenient route down here before it starts rubbing anything, right? Um, and now, uh, since it's getting close to the point where it's either gonna be hard to walk over or it's gonna actually start rubbing, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and walk over there. And my device is going straight out, so this is a pretty good spot. All right. It's fine to have it not straight up as long as it doesn't slide, right? So see how it's not sliding sideways? Yeah. Uh, that's fine. 
for the most part. <sighs> All right, I am off. Once you get the knot, uh, we can do the rope pull. <sighs> All right, so if you can go ahead and start undoing that uh, knot block. Okay, rope. Yeah, so go ahead and undo the knot. And then just uh, as I'm feeding it in, um, try to make sure it stays untangled. And then for this, you can use a simple overhand just to keep it tidy. All right, that's the first one done. So that's the rappel. We're gonna do another single static with the figure eight beater block. So we need to make sure to throw enough rope. So I'm just gonna pull some of this rope a stopper. If we were doing an aquatic canyon, you would definitely not want too much rope. Because if it's too much rope and you have to s swim in a pool, you can get tangled in the rope. Now, this is going to be the figure eight beaner block. But you're going to start by tying a regular figure eight. Keep in mind, I'm on the back side right here. A regular figure eight. And before I cinch it down, the beaner block part of it is hooking it through these two and through the bite. It's nice and blocked. And then I'm going to give it a backup, clipping the bite to the webbing so that if you pull on the wrong one, it catches you, right? You're clipped in here. Go ahead and start rigging up. All right, and then do your little weight transfer, as much weight as you can. If you need to let it out in order to properly test it, that's fine. We should figure out a nice way to do a static um, with the ATC, but I don't know how for now. So with your brake hand still on, go ahead and undo your anchor. Yeah, all the way down. He's off the rope. Uh, taking off the backup. Just double checking, rigging. Yep. I'm gonna try rigging this in a different way. Actually, wait, I'm not gonna do that without my gloves on. Feeling pretty good about that, All right? Yeah, and you see right here how as I go sideways, the rope is wanting to rub on that rock. Um, so just wanting to avoid that. I'm pulling on it in the direction I'm about to go so that when it lands on the rock, it doesn't want to move afterwards. Sweet. Pulling. Ruh. Wants to pop it out of the quick link. And then we're pulling it. There's the carabiner coming down. Just gonna try to be gentle and avoid it hitting the rock too much. Now, check it out. The The reason this is better than the regular figure eight knot block, we can undo it theoretically, right? There. So it might be a little tricky to get the carabiner out, but once it is out, there's a ton of room in here and you can totally just pop it out. Oh, that, that's pretty nice. Yeah. I, I like Getting the carabiner out is definitely gonna be easier than untying a really set knot. All right, rope. I see the next anchor. All right, it's right up here. Be aware of the cliff edge. All 
All right, inspecting the quick link. Looks fine. It looks good up there. Water knot looks good. There's this fray that we saw last time. Um, but I think it's gonna avoid rubbing on there. This is where last time we weren't using any personal anchors. Standing right here without a personal anchor is sketchy AF, and we should have noticed that. This is one where we can see the landing, so the, um, the static is going to be fine. Um, I should really be at least trying to get the length right. I'm going to do the little clove hitcheroo. That is a clove hitch. All right. Lock this before I forget, and my anchor's locked. All right, try to snug this down a little bit. Yep, so you see we've got a clove hitch here. And when I butt it up against the anchor here, or the quick link, you can see it's not pulling through. I'm going to back it up by clipping through the webbing and clipping through the block. And now if you pulled on the wrong one, uh, you'd be caught. Right. Um, so that's the backup. I'll take this off when I go. Yeah, but uh, that's good to go, I'd say. And cool. Go ahead and clip in. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling fine here. Actually, one sec. Uh, using the cow's tail is nice because I can do this here, right? Now adjust mine so that it's not tangled up, right? And then take mine off. Nice. I guess that's why you have two ends. Yeah. All right, and you're clipped in. And wherever's convenient, like right here, is totally fine. You just clip in like normal. All right, pause. You did it wrong. Oops. Do you see how you did it wrong? No, give me a second. Yeah, I'll let you try to figure it out first. Yep, okay. It's upside down. <laughs> Took a little instructional course last night, and they're like, if someone does it wrong, wait until the last second to tell them and see if they can figure it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Sweet. Do your tension transfer. Sweet. Go ahead and untie. Back up. It's off. I'm intentionally doing the zero setting. Let's see how that feels. Uh, yeah, that's feeling just fine. It's gonna be fun. Let me just come back up a little. Sweet. So I may come down a little faster than I have been before. Yep. Hell yeah. All right, you can go ahead and stop. Look what happened here. What See now, um, while I was going down, it clipped itself in. Yeah, just as I was going down, right? Um, so like as I was going down, so yeah, interesting. It just, like, we just got hit by a bunch of rain and I know. We are 
at an edge where we can't see if the rope hits the ground, so I will want to have a releasable system, and I'm gonna go with a single releasable, and there's no water to fall into. I'm gonna go ahead and tie the stopper knot, throw this out. If the bag had gone just now, that would have been real bad. New technical procedure, the rope stays up there. After we clipped in, pass it through, put a little stopper knot. Now we're gonna do the Munter Mule Overhand, which is the single releasable, but it's not retrievable. So uh, after you go down, I have to re-rig it, which means I'm gonna be last person at risk. I'm gonna want this below the rope like that. All right, so brake strand, rappel strand. We're gonna tie the Munter on the rappel strand. Right, I'm gonna clip it between that there. I'm gonna pull some of the brake strand out and make sure that it's flipped correctly and pretty well dressed. There we go. Pull some more of the brake strand out. Now we're gonna do the mule. So it's gonna be a hitch on a bite, essentially, more or less. All right. So that there is the mule, which that would be enough to lock it off, but we're gonna tie the overhand part now. All right, so the munter will be able to belay you. The mule is locking the munter and the overhand is keeping the bite from slipping out of the mule. So munter, mule, overhand. Believe this would act as a knot block or a beaner block if we pulled through the wrong strand, but just for good measure, I'm gonna clip the bite up there. This is the tie-in like usual. All right, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and start putting it in belay mode. I'm undoing the backup carabiner and I'm gonna undo the overhand. Undoing the overhand. All right, at this point I'm maintaining control of the brake strand. All right. All right, you're gonna feel a pop. You ready? Yep. I'm gonna lower you slowly and just tell me when the rope is just barely touching the ground. Lowering. I'm going to lock it off. You're still on rappel. Putting the mule on. All right. One sec. Just got my glove in it, so I gotta get my glove out without releasing the brake strand. There we go. And I'm putting the overhand in. And now you may complete the rappel. So now because this isn't retrievable, I'm gonna re-rig it using a regular block. I'm gonna just do clove hitch. That's not a clove hitch. There we go, that's a clove hitch. All right. There we go. The backup is off, meaning that if I went down the wrong strand, I would fall. But in this case, my personal anchor catches me from going down the wrong side when there's no backup. All right, the zero setting. I'll do my tension transfer. That feels good. There's no backup on there. Personal anchor is off. And I'm repelling. Man, this is so much nicer on the zero friction setting. All right. So I just gotta I'm gonna pretend that I'm catching myself clip in on camera. <laughs> <laughs>
There we go. Nice. Um, here we can't see the floor very well, so we're gonna do another single releasable. I'm gonna go ahead and tie a knot here so that he doesn't accidentally go off the end. This would get stuck in your ATC and it would stop you from going off, right? Gotcha. It's gonna be uh, EMO, which is eight mule overhand. So we've got the rappel strand on this side. So the EMO is going on the back side. I'm gonna put the eight near where I want, pull it through. And now that's the configuration for belaying. I belay you just like I were rappelling on my own eight. All right, so there's the eight. This is the mule and I'm pulling a bite through it. And then here's the O, the overhand. All right, the, the eight is rigged up to be able to belay. The mule is stopping the belay from happening and the overhand is stopping the mule from coming undone. And now the backup is going to be shoving a bite through here and clipping a carabiner through the webbing and through the bite, locking it off, testing the backup. Yeah, if you pull it, it's cinching up the overhand and it's cinching up the mule and it's all pulling on to the backup here. So that's good. You're free to begin tying in. You set up the rappel device and then go ahead and do the weight transfer. And then now that you're transferred onto it, go ahead and undo your personal anchor. Sweet. And yeah, you're good to go. And yeah, just watch for the end of the rope. Just let me know and then I'll pop this and lower you down. The backup is coming off. And I'm pulling the overhand through, clipping that on there. All right, the overhand is coming out. Maintaining control of the brake strand. All right, you may feel a pop. All right, I'm gonna start lowering you. So just let me know when the rope is barely touching the ground. I'll go ahead and try to tie it off again. All right. All right. That's the mule engaged, still maintaining control of the brake strand. All right. And that's the overhand. You're free to repel it to the ground. Okay. All right, I'm gonna take off the backups and prepare it for me. So now it is gonna be retrievable. I'm gonna tie in tension transfer. Feels good. I'm ready to repel. I'm gonna remove the anchor. Coming down. And clip in. In this one, we are doing a twin isolated static system. Either rappel strand will be good to use. I definitely want a knot in it in case we're not able to verify that it touched the ground. I suppose if we were trying to get multiple th people through, the first person could go on the end we're about to throw. And then if they see, if they go on the strand that we know is long enough, um, they can just say that the other end is good too. That also went in the water. <laughs> We're real canyoneers now. I'm gonna tie a stone knot. My stone knot is gonna look like this and that. And then I'm going to clip the back strands, right? And then I'm also gonna clip one of these strands here. 
that. Click, click. Now I'm gonna dress it, pulling on each strand individually. It should be totally valid, as far as I can tell, for you to come in and clip into one strand here. Go ahead and start setting up your device. Do your little weight transfer, confirm that it all feels solid. The friction through that feel good. All right, go ahead and uh, unclip your anchor and away you go. And since this extension here, I'll be able to come up and check on you. You can see how if I had chosen to make this out further, then I would be able to walk up even further and check on you. Yeah, remember to lean back. That's looking super solid. Nothing's budging. That rub point is why I would want to have a releasable system. I'm going to untie this and repel double. I'm gonna move this. That's untied. And I'm going to set up to repel double. All right, that's good. Clip it in. To avoid the twists, I'm gonna clip one strand through my loop here. And that's just gonna keep untwisted while I go through, waiting the system. That feels good to me. All right, I'm coming down. Man, doing it double like this has so much more friction. Time to get the rope pulled. I did pretty much what you're doing now. All right. And then I just like leaned in. Oh, that was totally chill. Yeah, let me grab this or no. I'm gonna clip in without worrying about the rope. Condition of it seems fine. Yep. We're doing a twin isolated static rigging using the big butterfly method. So I'm gonna pass it through. And we're just going right there, so it's not very far. And I'm just doing a big butterfly. So. Had to happen eventually. One repel per battery. <laughs> All right, last battery we tried was just totally dead. This is another battery. Okay, so we're tying a big butterfly. So I'm getting a huge bite here. Uh, twisted once, twisted twice, through here. This is so big, it's kind of hard to dress. I'm gonna do the whole pull on each individual strand thing. That, 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 and that strand. You should be able to clip in on this, and I should be able to clip in on this, right? Right, and this is further away from the anchor, right? So I can stand much more comfortably over here now. The cow's tail is nice because I was able to transfer without ever exposing myself. Come up and clip in and all that. Cool. All right, doing that tension transfer, all feel good. He's down there. I'm gonna move my personal anchor back up there, untie this and i'm gonna repel double again right through there clip this little guide over there that anchor feels good so i'll go ahead and unclip toss it on here we have a bfr here that i'm a little sketched out by we've been able to wobble it by pulling over here but when we're pulling it um, in the direction of the rappel it's a lot more solid so i'm gonna set up a single static and then i'm gonna dead man him from back there as a backup that's positive confirmation <laughs> It would absolutely tear apart if I tried. Oh, you could shred this thing to bits with yeah. your bare hands. Um, so I'm gonna not do that. I'm tying a figure eight beaner block. Let's see, what is safer? Not having a backup, in which case the chance of you grabbing the wrong strand 
is non-zero, but I'm gonna be pulling this back there anyway. And if I do put the backup on here and it goes, it's attached to the rock, right? Yeah. So I think I'm gonna not put that backup carabiner on, if you agree with that. These two here, and technically, if you do this, this isn't hooking into the rope. It's like doing that, right? Because right? you're going around both strands, but it just adds bulk to it. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you put it through the bite, that's grabbing it more. For example, if it were only on here and, and then it started pulling through, then it's not actually attached to the rope, right? I see. Um, so the bite is the safe thing and um, putting it through the two strands or around, not through, around the two strands uh, adds bulk to it. Strands, bite, lock, tighten them up. One strand, two strand, three strand, four strand. I'm gonna take this off and back up. Figure eight, beaner block here. No backup carabiner because we chose not to. He's clipping into the rappel strand. I've got the uh, pull strand over here that I'm going to tie into my figure eight and I'm going to dead man him as a backup on this little lip here. So he's going to be putting all his weight on that rock and I've got it as a backup over here. If I see the rock moving significantly or probably at all, um, I'm just going to sit down right here. Do your little procedure. Once your weight transferred and everything, go ahead and undo that. You're good to go. You're doing good. coming down with the bag this time. Yeah. <laughs> Rope. All right. Do you know what kind of bird it is? Is it an owl? It looks vaguely like an owl. Yeah. yeah. 